As for the Sunan al Rawatib, and these are the Sunnah prayers which are connected to the Fara'id. So the Sunan al Rawatib, there are two raka'ats before, before the Fajr prayer. And then two or four raka'at before Dhuhr. And two raka'atain and two raka'at after. And two raka'at after Maghrib and two raka'at after Isha. And the most important and emphasized of these sunnah al-rawatib are the two sunnah before Fajr. And these two raka'at before Fajr are not to be abandoned whether a person is resident or traveling. And these two raka'at before Salat al-Fajr, they are better for you than that which is in the dunya. Now, if all of the goodness around the globe of the dunya was connect, collected for you, the two raka'at before Fajr are better. As for Salat al-Witr, as for Salat al-Witr, then this is a, a strongly emphasized sunnah which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was consistent over and he would never abandon the witr prayer whether he was resident or traveling. And Come. the lowest number of the witr prayer is how many? Nah. So the least number of raka'at for the witr prayer, so the lowest number of perfection is three raka'at. Nah. So the lowest number of raka'at for witr, which is still within perfection, is three raka'at. And then the lowest of the low, the absolute minimum amount is one raka'at. When does a person pray the witr prayer? Between Salat al-Isha and between Fajr. But we said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was consistent upon praying Salat al-Witr. So if you know within yourself that you are going to wake up before the Fajr prayer, then leave or delay your Witr until before the Fajr. And if you know from yourself that you're going to sleep and you're, got, and you're not going to wake up before the time of Fajr, then pray your Witr immediately and then sleep. And then after this, we have the Salah of the two Eids. The people of Islam, we only have two Eids. So Eid al-Fitr, which comes after Ramadan, and then Eid al-Adha, which comes during Hajj, after the day in which a person goes to Arafah. The asl, the base default ruling is that Salat al-Eid is prayed outside in an open area, not inside a building. But if a person prayed Salat al-Eid inside the masjid, it is correct and valid. And Salat al-Eid is two raka'at. In the first raka'at, a person makes seven takbirat, including takbiratul ihram. And in the second raka'ah, five takbirat, excluding the takbiratul intiqal. And we said that every salah in which a congregation is legislated, then it is said out aloud. As for the salah of the eclipse, whether it is solar or lunar, as for the salah of or the eclipse prayer, then this is that a person continues praying Salah until the eclipse ceases and the sun can be seen. And this is because the sun and the moon, both of them are ayat of Allah. And the eclipse is an ayah of Allah which he decrees in order to bring fear into the hearts of the believers. And the Imam, he leads the people in Salat al-Kusuf. He says, Allahu Akbar. And then Dua al-Istiftah, then he recites Surah Al-Fatiha, and then he recites a long Surah. And then he goes into Ruku' by saying Allahu Akbar. And then Sami Allahu liman hamida rabbana wa lakal hamd, and he stands up. And then he begins reciting Surah Al-Fatiha again. And then he re recites another long Surah, however shorter than the first. And then he says Allahu Akbar and enters into Ruku' and Sami Allahu liman hamida and rabbana wa lakal hamd, and then into Sujood. And then he says Allahu Akbar and sits up. And then he says Allahu Akbar and goes into sujood. And then he says Allahu Akbar and stands up for the second rak'ah and recites Surah Al-Fatiha. And then he recites another long surah. And then he go and he says Allahu Akbar and goes into And then he says Sami Allahu li wa nahamida rabbana wa lakal hamd. And then he recites Surah Al-Fatiha and another surah. And then he says Allahu Akbar and goes into ruku' Then raises up from ruku' And then he makes a sujood. And then he sits up. And then he makes a sujood. And then he sits up and he makes a taslim. There are four sets of ruku' which are performed in two raka'at. So this salah is different from the other salawat. As for salat al-istisqa, which is the salah which is prayed to seek rain, if the people are in need for rain to descend, the imam, he gives the people an appointed time for them to go outside. And on this day, the people in general, they should try to perform as many actions which they can do which bring about the mercy of Allah, like fasting and making istighfar and giving in charity 
and forgiving each other and paying the rights. And Salat al-Istisqa, its description is like Salat al-Eid. As for Salat al-Duha, as for Salat al-Duha, then its time is when the sun has completely risen. After the sun, you look at the calendar and you see the time. And when the sun has completely risen above the horizon, then you pray Salat al-Duha until before the Adhan of Salat al-Duhr by about 10 to 15 minutes. And you can pray between two to eight raka'at in sets of two, two raka'at, two raka'at and so on. And then there are other general nawafil which a person can pray for the sake of Allah. And this is outside of the times in which it is prohibited to pray a salah. The times in which we are forbidden to pray Salah are three times. Firstly, after Salat al-Fajr until the sun has completely risen above the horizon. And then before Salat al-Dhuhr by about 10 minutes. And then after the Imam finishes with his Taslim Salat al-Asr until the Adhan of Salat al-Maghrib. So these three times a person should not pray general nawafil for the sake of Allah. Two rak'at. So a person during these times cannot pray nafal mutlaq meaning general nawafil. However... Is, no. However, if there is a particular reason or cause attached to this nafal prayer, then a person is legislated to pray it. For example, if a person is making up a missed salah, for example, a person slept and he forgot to pray, he woke up in one of these prohibited times, then he can pray the salah. If a person enters into the masjid and needs to pray the al masjid, they can be prayed in this. Also the sunnah after the wudu. And also the two raka'at that you pray after the tawaf of the ka'ab. And if a person needs to pray salat al-istikhara, any obligatory salah must have before it the adhan and the iqamah. And this is the same whether a person is resident or traveling. The adhan and the iqamah should be made. And if you are in a place, for example, let's say you, if you were in the woods and you heard the adhan, then you can give the iqamah and you can pray. However, if you are in a place in which you did not hear the adhan, then it's an obligation for you to say the adhan and then the iqamah, then you pray. And as for the prostration of forgetfulness, and this is the prostration that is due to forgetfulness in the salah and not due to doing something intentionally. And there are three root causes for sujood sahu An addition or a deficiency in the salah or if there is a doubt. Firstly, an addition in the salah. So, Sheikh Ibrahim, may Allah guide us and guide him. In Salat al-Dhuhr, he stood up for a fifth rak'ah. Do you as the congregation behind him also stand up in his mistake? No, you remain sitting in the shahd. And then you say, you remind him or notify him by saying, Subhanallah. But don't cause chaos in the masjid, a rebellion in the masjid. So there's no need for the person right from the back to say, Subhanallah and shout at. The one who is at the front who said, Subhanallah is sufficient. Naam. In Masjid al nabawi al-Sharif and Masjid al-Haram al-Makki, and the people are standing far away from the Imam, and they are so far that they cannot even see the first rak'at or the first rose. And they still shout out, Subhanallah. Why? Just to tell the people, look, I'm focused, I'm, I'm on it. So the Imam, if he stood up for the fifth rak'ah, you remain sitting in the tashahud and you say subhanallah. And as soon as the Imam realizes for certainty that he is now making an error and he's in the fifth rak'ah, he sits down immediately without doing or saying anything, not even a word. And then the second cause of sujood sahu is a deficiency. So if it is one of the arkan, one of the fundamental pillars of salah which he is deficient in, the rak'ah is invalid until he repeats the rak'ah along with the uh, rukn. If a person he forgot to say Surah Al-Fatiha. So in the second rak'ah, he forgot to recite Surah Al-Fatiha and then he carried on praying until now he is in the tashahud. Now this second rak'ah of his, all of it is invalid. So then he has to stand up once again and recite Surah Al-Fatiha and then complete the second rak'ah again. And then the third root cause of sujood sahu is a doubt. And this we will come to. There are two types or two categories of doubt. So either the doubt enters upon a person within the salah or the doubt enters upon a person after completing the act of worship. Whatever that act of worship is, whether it is wudu, or whether it is salah, whatever the act of ibadah is, the doubt it enters upon him after completing the act of ibadah. Any type of doubt which comes upon a person 
after completing the act of worship, even if it is a doubt which has reached 99% but not 100%, you don't turn to it. You completely ignore it. A person finishes praying salah and he has doubt whether in the fourth rak'ah he recited Surah Al-Fatiha. So the salah here, the salah here, it is valid and completely correct. And if he was to return and repeat the salah again, he's sinning. So Sheikh Ibrahim, he says, Allahu Akbar, he makes a takbir. And then shaitan comes to him. And then he puts a doubt in his mind, are you upon wudu? And he begins saying, I don't know. And he thinks, what do you think we should go back? So he should not go back and he should not entertain the doubt. Why? Because he only said the takbir upon wudu. And so if he breaks the salah due to this paranoia from shaitan and he goes and repeats the wudu, then he is sinning. A person entered to make wudu. And then after making wudu, he enters into the masjid. And, and he begins I, to feel his head. Did I wipe over my head or not? But the wudu has finished. If he returns back and makes wudu and repeats it, then he's sinning. If a person made tawaf around the Kaaba seven times and then after this prayed two rak'at behind Maqam Ibrahim. And then he goes to Mount Safa. And then he says and he has a doubt that by Allah I have a 99% doubt that I only performed tawaf six times and not seven. Has the tawaf finished? Yes, you've completed the tawaf. So if you now return back and make tawaf again, then you are sinning. A man came to a great scholar from amongst the a'imma. He says, oh imam, I completely immerse myself in water, whether it's the sea or a river, I completely immerse myself in water. And then when I come out of the water, it seems that there is a small part on my body which is not wet. So what is upon me? The Sheikh said, don't pray. He said, why are, you, uh, why are you telling me not to pray? Why are you removing the obligation of prayer from me? Because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the pen of blame and responsibility has been removed from three people and you are one of them. So any person who is suffering from this paranoia, you say to him that we have two choices or options for you. Either you abandon the paranoia or you abandon salah because you are majnoon. What do you want to choose? And so he should choose to abandon the paranoia. Why? Because he is a worshipper of Allah, not a worshipper of shaitan. So to summarize, any type of doubt which enters upon a person after having completed the act of worship, it is completely ignored unless it is yaqeen, certainty, 100% certainty. Then the second type of doubt is when the doubt enters upon a person within the act of worship. And this is two further types. Firstly, a person who is affected by many doubts, always going to sujood the sahu what does this person do? He should completely ignore the doubts. If he doubts whether it is three or four rak'at, then he considers it to be four rak'at and there's no need for sujood sahu. Now, understood? Because this person, he's being affected by paranoia and through this, this paranoia will cease. And then you have the second category and that is somebody who every now and again may be affected by a doubt. For example, he says that perhaps one in a, once in a year, I have to make sujood sahu based upon a doubt. An Imam in Al Masjid al Nabawi al Sharif, and he has been an Imam leading the people for 40 years, and it has never been recorded that he has had to make sujood sahu. Why? Because he leaves the dunya outside. If a person has with him his phone, and throughout the salah the phone is ringing, how is he going to pray? No, he's not even able to sit. And as soon as he makes taslim, he begins checking his phone. The mobile is a big shaitan, except for the one whom Allah has mercy upon. Because these mobiles, they preoccupy you from Allah Azza wa Jal. Pray it on flight mode and pray. So this person who is not affected by doubts much, if he has a doubt whether he prayed three or four rak'at, we say to him, which one is a higher probability with you? We say to him that if you think that the greater probability is that you have prayed four rak'at as opposed to three rak'at, consider it to be four rak'at and then make sujood sahu. But if he thinks that the major probability is that he has prayed three rak'at and not four, and then we say to him, consider it to be three rak'at and then pray the fourth one and then sujood sahu. If, however, he says that neither one is more probable than the other, here you base 
on that which is least, i.e. three. When does a person prostrate for forgetfulness? The a'imma with us, the imams, they most of the times they uh, perform sudu sahu before the taslim so as not to confuse the people. So before a taslim, a person says Allahu Akbar and then during the sujood he says Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la and this is the same tasbih which is said in every type of sujood, whether it is sujood sahu or whether it is sujood tilawa or sujood shukar, every type of sujood a person makes the same tasbihat. And then he says Allahu Akbar to sit up and Rabbi Ghfirli and then he says Allahu Akbar once more and goes into sujood and says Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la and then Allahu Akbar sit up without making tashahu. then immediately he makes his taslim. And so Imam Ibrahim, after making sujood sahu he then begins to say the tashahud. So now he has made a mistake within the sujood sahu. What should he do? There's nothing upon him. He makes taslim. And then we come to sujood ash-shukr. And sujood, sujood ash-shukr, the sujood of thankfulness and gratitude is made when there is a blessing which is bestowed upon a person or when a person is saved from a particular harm. For example, if... Sheikh Ibrahim, if he was told that the Mercedes is outside and this is the key for you. And so he falls into sujood al-shukr. And he says, subhan rabbi al-a'la. Or when harm has been prevented from a person. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an, when information reached him that Musaylima, the liar, had been killed, he, f he made sujood al-shukr. As for the sujood of tilawa due to reciting Qur'an, then this remains a sunnah whether a person is reciting Qur'an inside the salah or outside the salah. If the imam and he was giving a khutbah and he recited a surah which contains sujood tilawa, then it is legislated for him in the middle of the khutbah to make a sujood tilawa and also the people behind him, they make sujood tilawa. If the imam and he's leading the people in the, in the salah, if he goes down and makes sujood tilawa the congregation behind him are also obligated to follow him and make sujood tilawa And even a qari, a person who was reciting the Qur'an outside of the salah, and he came across an ayah which contained sujood tilawa and he goes into sujood, I can follow him. So Sheikh Ibrahim, whilst he's driving his Mercedes 500S 2022, no. I've memorized it now. Uh, and anyway, he's listening to Taraweeh and the Imam Sheikh on the radio, Sudais. Sheikh Sudais, he goes into Sujood Tilawa. Does he also go into Sujood yeah. Sheikh Ibn Uthameen says, no, why? Because this is via the radio. But had he been in Mecca behind the Imam, then he makes Sujood Tilawa. Now, Ibrahim, yeah. if he was driving his Mercedes and he was reciting the Quran, and then he comes across an ayah which contains Sujood Tilawa, whilst he's driving, he can make sujood and that, that is by slightly lowering the head. Uh, brothers, just two quick points. Firstly, there's four or five minutes for the salah, so whoever needs to make a wudu can make a wudu. Second point, so we don't oppress Ibrahim and he doesn't make dua against the Sheikh or the translator, he doesn't have a Mercedes. <laughs> so, wallahi, he has a Ford now. <laughs> so I don't want him to think that. As even a translator, I oppressed him. How the Sagheed? Ta'ala khalfak. تعال نعم هذا من المواظبين على الدرس طيب نتوضا بعد الصلاة في درس <تصفيق>